Welcome back. In this video, we'll talk about sympathomimetic medications. These medications mimic the sympathetic activity. As we know, sympathetic system is activated in fight or flight mode. So think of somebody who's running, and these medications will basically put the body in the same stress. The sympathomimetics can be subdivided into direct sympathomimetics and indirect sympathomimetics. The direct will act directly on the receptor, and the indirect will work around the receptor but not directly on the receptor. First in our list is dobutamine, and this works mainly on the beta-1 receptor. We know that the beta-1 receptor is mainly present in the heart, and the activation of this receptor ramps up the heart and increases its function. So a patient taking dobutamine will have his or her heart rate increase as if they're running. So we mainly use dobutamine in cases of acute heart failure, such as in cardiogenic shocks, and sometimes to do the cardiac stress test. To do the normal stress test, the patient would have to run in a treadmill, and we would attach EKG to the patient. But if the patient cannot run for any reason, such as knee problems or obesity, we can use dobutamine to achieve the same heart rate. Next are these medications, which mainly act on the beta-2 receptor. Beta-2 is mainly present in the lungs. So remember, beta-1 acts on the heart because we have one heart. Beta-2 acts on the lungs because we have two lungs. Activation of this receptor by these medications causes the expansion of the bronchioles. Again, think of somebody who's running. In the state of running, the body would want more air to go into the lungs. So normally, the body would activate the beta-2 receptor, and the bronchioles will dilate, easing the breath. These medications basically achieve the same effect. And we use them mainly in asthma and asthma attacks, because the issue in asthma is constricted bronchioles. Next, we have epinephrine and it activates both beta-1 and beta-2 in almost equal proportions. So this increases the heart work and dilates the bronchioles. Because its effect is so wide, we use it in anaphylactic patients, or sometimes in shock syndromes. Because in these cases, the body will be shutting down, and epinephrine will ramp up the body. Next, we have norepinephrine, and this is basically a modified epinephrine, which makes it act mainly on the alpha-1 receptors. These are found in the vessels around the body. Activation of these receptors result in the constriction of the vessels and increasing the blood pressure. So we can use norepinephrine in hypotension and septic shock. Next we have phenylephrine, and this also acts on the alpha-1 receptor. However, the medication is mainly used as a topical drops, so we use it mainly in ocular procedures. Again, imagine somebody who is running. When you're running, you want your eyes to dilate, so you can see more broadly and more clearly. This helps you to reach where you're going or run away from what's chasing you. And in ophthalmic procedures, we want the same effect. We want the eyes to dilate, so we can work better. And for that, we use phenylephrine. It is also the most commonly used decongestant, along with atropine. So these are the most important direct sympathomimetics. And the first in our list for the indirect is amphetamine. And this works by inhibiting the reuptake of epinephrine. This is mainly used to treat narcolepsy and ADHD. Next we have ephedrine. And this causes the release of the stored catecholamines, such as epinephrine. It is a rarely used decongestant. And it can be used to treat hypotension. And finally, we have cocaine. And this is again a reuptake inhibitor. And it causes vasoconstriction. And it can be used as local anesthesia. Alright guys, that's all I have. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully this helps.